Nectar in a Sieve by Kamala Markandaya was first published in 1954. It's set in India and it was published first in London. Uh, it has since been picked up by Small Axes and that is an imprint of Hope Robed Publishing. Now, you may not know the name of Kamala Markandaya, but let me just read out what it says on the back of this novel. Before there was a Salman Rushdie, before there was an Amitav Ghosh or Arundhati Roy, there was Kamala Markandaya. In its timeless evocation of the rural poor and its memorable portrait of one woman's fortitude, this is a novel that should capture another generation of readers, says Thriti Umragar. Now, doesn't that tell you something, that uh, the universality is still there, the poignancy is still there and relevant for today? This fairly short story um, packs quite a punch because I love the style of this author's writing. It's very precise. Uh, you get the sense that she has worked on every sentence. Um, there are no extraneous words. There's nothing superfluous. It is written in a very um, convincing and eloquent style. Um, this is the story of Rukmani who grows up in poverty. She is married early on to um, her husband Nathan and they live in a mud hut in virtually in the middle of nowhere it feels. They get their income, they live off the land, um, so they grow rice, uh, they collect dung um, and theirs is very much a hand-to-mouth existence um, that many of us just cannot simply imagine. But Kamala Markandaya has really kind of evoked the setting and the people within this setting where if it rains too much there is no food if it rains too little there is no food and you know every rupee counts the couple at first struggles to have children but eventually the children arrive this of course compounds their situation because they have more mouths to feed down the road a tannery is being built and there is high expectation that uh, the prosperity from that will have a ripple effect on the surrounding communities but of course as we know wealth and power sometimes can have the opposite effect and there is a sort of quiet inevitability about what will become of the community that surrounds the tannery and isn't it interesting that the author who was a lifelong vegetarian actually chose to build a tannery which you know is in such stark contrast to the ethos that she will have followed herself. Nectar in a Sieve is a strong, it's a quiet novel, um, but it still has such relevance for today, you know, whether you look at the weather patterns that affect people, whether you look at the exploitation of people, the rich, the poor. Um, so it still has prescience uh, in today's world. So if you're looking for something different to read that will transport you to India, um, Nectar in a Sieve by Kamala Markandaya is certainly worth your time.